Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about the discovery of the oldest material in the solar system right here on our planet Earth, but inside of an asteroid that collided with our planet a few decades ago. Let's talk a little bit more about this and welcome to What The Math. So our story starts right here in Australia in 1969. The scientists observe a fall of an asteroid near a region known as Murchison in Victoria, Australia. So we're going to actually see how this collides here in the simulation, but this is really not the important part. The important part is that we were able to then recover this rock. Okay, that actually destroyed Australia by accident. Oops, was not supposed to happen. I think I might have created a rock that was a little bit too large. The Murchison meteorite looks kind of like this. This is what we were able to recover and it's about 100 kilograms or about 200 pounds in weight and it's been extensively studied over the years. We actually found out some really really interesting things about the solar system from studying this meteorite and uh, things like for example um, organic materials, things like various amino acids and organic compounds that were discovered inside the grains in, in this meteorite allowed us to start understanding the evolution of the solar system and how all of the organic compounds probably arrived to our planet from the collisions of various asteroids and various meteorites with our planet. In other words, this rock taught us a lot about the evolution of the solar system and the evolution of our planet. But now it also taught us that it possesses a very very ancient material and potentially presents a proof for a really important theory of star formation. So first of all, you can learn about all of this by reading the paper in the description below. This is from a study that was very recently published, but the idea here is that by looking at the tiny granules inside the meteorites, the scientists identified that these granules were formed way way before our solar system, approximately 7 billion years ago, roughly around 3 billion years before the solar system even started forming. In other words, it came from the original gas cloud that created our solar system and probably a lot of other stars in the region. But also, these granules represent the so-called real stardust the actual solar dust that created all of us billions of years later. These are literally solid samples of an actual star that then turned into various stars around the uh, galaxy, and we normally refer to these as pre-solar grain minerals. The tiny bits of matter that eventually combined into objects like stars, and of course things like planets. But because back in college I did um, quite a lot of research on various asteroids and I remember how painful and difficult it was, I also wanted to find out how exactly did the scientists accomplish this. So I remember that when you actually try to study things inside asteroids, like this one here is one of the more famous ones, the Allen Hills 84001 is the asteroid that was discovered in Antarctica in the place known as Allen Hills, and it became really famous almost overnight because of the discovery of this unusual shape here. It resembled life, and because of this, scientists actually started speculating that maybe this was a sign of life from outer space. But then it turned out to be a somewhat natural phenomenon that was later reproduced in another paper. But in order to get these grains, the technique is really old school. You have to take the original rock and then use the mortar and pestle to grind it into tiny tiny little pieces which you then turn into a paste. This somewhat stinky rocky paste is then dissolved in acid and this helps isolate these grains which can then be studied and dated. But unlike typical carbon dating that we often use for organic matter, to date these rocks a lot of other techniques have to be used. And for this study, the scientists used the idea that the cosmic rays that strike everything around the universe pretty much every single second will eventually turn certain materials into something else. And in this case, they looked at the amount of neon-21 that was produced over time. And the principle here is pretty simple. The longer something is exposed to cosmic rays, the more material we're going to discover. And by studying the amount of neon-21 inside of these granules, they discovered that some of them were anywhere from 3 to even 3.9 billion years older than the origin of our solar system. In other words, close to 7.5 billion years old. But this was only some of the grains. A lot of the grains, actually most of them, were still much much younger. Some of them appeared to be even younger than 4 billion years old. So in other words, this meteorite possessed a mixture of material from various ages. It's as if it accumulated all of this over the period of about 5 to possibly 6 billion years. 
And these probably came from our own solar system, but some of the material came from other star systems and basically the dust that created other stars including our sun. And this is where it gets really really interesting, because a lot of these materials seem to indicate that something major occurred about 4.6 to maybe 4.9 billion years ago, and also another major event occurred about 7 billion years ago as well. In other words, what the uh, actual granules suggest to us is that a really major starburst activity occurred around this time. In other words, various stars started to suddenly be formed at the same time from the same cloud and actually possibly several different clouds, all of which resulted in the formation of various stars, including of course our sun. And it actually reinforces the theory we've had before that 7 billion years ago there was a major starburst formation that formed a really large amount of stars in our solar system. This has been speculated for a very long time, but the materials from this meteorite now present us with an actual physical proof that it very likely did happen. So here, this is where it gets even more interesting because we now have a much better understanding of how galaxies actually evolve as well. In other words, Here's what a typical starburst galaxy might look like if you were to look at it. This is actually very likely what the Milky Way looked like 7 billion years ago as well. Another real life example is this right here. Uh, this is the antenna galaxies and you'll notice that there are a lot of really large parts that are really really bright. These are starburst activities. This is where many different stars, thousands if possibly even millions of stars are being formed at the same time and all of them from a relatively similar material. And we believe that this is exactly how galaxies actually grow and how our Milky Way grew as well. Galaxies don't just evolve by creating stars constantly. The vast majority of stars in every galaxy are very likely created suddenly through these bursts. And then they kind of stay around for a little bit until the new gas cloud comes in and starts bursting again, creating even more stars. So all of these bursts of growth are very difficult for us to actually prove until we start finding samples like this that show us that something major did occur around this time. And another really unusual discovery from the study is that for some reason these grains tend to actually stick together very very tightly. So these pre-solar grains actually come in chunks, they don't just come in tiny little pieces. And because we've discovered that they do tend to actually kind of accumulate into larger pieces, it means that we're going to be able to discover a lot more of these pre-solar grains in the near future by studying other asteroids as well. And by doing all of this, we'll eventually be able to kind of learn to understand how our galaxy evolved, what stars were created, what other stars were formed in the same region as the Sun, most importantly, discover these so-called solar analogs, stars that are similar to our Sun, and possibly even discover the star systems that were created around the same time that might possess planets similar to Earth. And this is of course one of the major goals of modern science, trying to discover something else out there in space that might serve as new home for us, or a place where we can discover alien life. But until we actually discover something new, that's really it. Check out the study in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. And maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.